Okay, let us pray as we begin our next session. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can keep learning and we can keep growing in you. Please help us to be attentive and learn all that we need to learn about fasting and recovery meals. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so we are doing fruit fasting, so I'm going to give you some details about fruit fasting. So as you have already experienced, at each meal we only use one type of fruit. And that is because we want it to make the easiest done to digest. Okay, so um, outside of fruit fasting, when you eat meals, you can eat a couple of different kinds, two, three types of, of fruits that are the similar types of fruits, and uh, that's not a problem. But if you have problems digesting, it's always better to minimize the number of varieties. Okay, so one kind of fruit and eat a different fruit at each meal. But if you have only three types of fruits, you can repeat the same fruits the next day if necessary. So if you only have apples, bananas, and oranges, then the first day you can do that. Second day, apples, oranges, bananas. Third day, if you need to, you know, you can do that. But if you have a lot of, um, you know, variety, that's even better. All right. Um, next, don't use fatty fruits like durian and avocado. And I shouldn't put jackfruit for some because um, it's not fatty at all. So we don't use fatty fruits like durian and avocado during fruit fasting because they're fatty. <clears throat> Uh, so the purpose of fasting is for the cleansing, and so we don't want the fat to be clogging things up, okay? So we don't use, uh, I, I used to use jackfruit in Thailand where it was available very readily, but then some people had some very adverse reactions. Um, and so then I just stopped using it, but I think it's okay. Like if you're in your um, tropical countries and you have jackfruit and people are okay with it, then y yeah, you can use it, not a problem. But so, some people have, some reactions to it. Might have been very heavy. Sometimes you get the crunchy ones very hard to digest. Yeah, sometimes, per perhaps. I'm not sure why it was, but just some people have problems with certain fruits. And it's, it's the same for other fruits as well. Some people just have problems. And so, um, yeah, if you have any problem with certain types of fruits, just let our team know. If you let us know ahead of time, that's easier for us to prepare. Um, uh, but uh, we can swap things out, but we want to stick with kind of following the right order as much as possible. Okay. Next, don't use pineapple for fruit fasting. And don't eat pineapple alone for meals. The problem is it has an enzyme called bromelain. And that enzyme is used to um, break down protein. And so if you're eating just pineapple alone, it doesn't have any protein or other things to break down. So instead, it'll start breaking down the lining, the stomach lining. Um, so there was a pastor, a Korean pastor, who went to the Philippines to go study for a year. And he was loving all the tropical fruits because you don't have them very cheaply in Korea. All the mangoes, bananas, papayas, pineapple, durian, you name it. And he loved pineapple. Well, he spent the year there, went home, went for a health checkup and found out that he had like ulcers all in, her, in his stomach. And, f and they think that the correlation is the pineapple, eating pineapple alone. The bromelain was eating up the stomach lining. So better not to eat it by itself. Yeah. All right, next. Um, if you're doing water fasting or fruit fasting for three days or longer, yeah, use the salt. Add about half a teaspoon of salt in your water twice a day, morning and afternoon. And again, that will help you to balance out your electrolytes. So especially when you're feeling dizzy, lightheaded, etc., cetera, um, having a little bit of salt is helpful. Celtic salt. Celtic salt has a lot of different minerals. Yes, it's really wonderful. Um, the importance of recovery meals. Now, this is an aspect that many people don't know about and that I really emphasize. And I want to tell you some very, um, very serious stories to help you to remember how important this is, okay? So first of all, um, fasting, is it easy or is it difficult? Yeah, for some people it's easy, some people it's very difficult. Uh, it's, a, it's a spectrum. For some people, when they fast, they don't feel anything. But other people, Oh, it's very hard. Like for me, it's very taxing. It's very draining. I feel exhausted, you know, lack of energy, tired, all these kinds of things. And it takes time to recover. So um, comparatively to what we're going to talk about next, 
fasting is actually easy. What is actually more difficult is eating. Is eating and it's the recovery meals. So as you've been eating fruit, you might not feel super hungry, but once you start eating cooked foods, your appetite will kick in a lot stronger. And then you're going to want to eat so much more. So that's why um, we portion out your foods during the recovery. And um, I say, okay, this is your meal. You don't get any seconds during recovery meals. Um, and so just chew. And even though you're going to be hungry, um, hang in there for a few more days. And then you'll find the right amounts to satisfy you. So Mrs. Choi's eldest daughter, her name is Sana. And she was the one that was cooking at the Bethel Sanitarium for, you know, like a few decades. And... Um, so she was ahead of the kitchen, and one, at one point she um, gained so much weight, and she said, I want to lose 10 kilos. And so she said, okay, I know that water, if you do water fasting, you lose one kilo a day, approximately, for most people. If you do fruit fasting, you lose about half a kilo a day. So she said, okay, I'm going to do water fasting, and she did it. 10 days, lost the 10 kilos. Then she had to start the recovery meals, but she was head of the, the kitchen and she was tasting the foods and she was not able to control herself as she started tasting those foods and she ended up gaining 13 kilos. She lost 10 kilos and then straight after gained 13 kilos. So she was actually three kilos more than she started with and she went through all the pain of fasting for 10 days so remember once you start eating you know you have to have some extreme willpower <laughs> dependence up upon god if you're doing it yourself um, to be able to control what you eat all right so next um korea you know used to be a buddhist nation but um, I think at the turn of the 1900s, Christianity came in. And then by um, the wartime in the uh, mid-1940s to the 50s, um, then Christianity came in very strong. To, that today, about 50% of the nation is Christian, and maybe you know the other half is Buddhist and the other, other religions. But Koreans, they have, they're very, like, very passionate, very passionate people. And they don't do things half-heartedly. Interestingly enough, um, America is the country that has the number, uh, the most missionaries sent out, right, to the rest of the world. But Korea is the second country that sends out the most missionaries in all, to, the, to the world. Now, America has like, oh, 300 million people. Korea has 25 million. It's almost the same as Australia. So really interesting. You can see how passionate they are. And so especially the middle-aged ladies, they love to pray. And not just pray, fast and pray. They have these places in the mountains where there are prayer retreats. And they'll go, um, and they'll go for like four days, five days, or a week and pray and then come back down. Um, and they'll do that once a month or once every two months. But do you know what they don't know about? They don't know about recovery meals. So when they come home, they start tasting their food and imagine what would happen. Can't control yourself. And then you just eat and eat and eat. And the problem is that when you overeat, it causes a lot of issues and digestive problems. There's an interesting statistic that for this demographic of the middle-aged Christian ladies, there's a very high incidence of digestive disorders. And I wonder if that there is a parallel because of this lack of understanding of how to do the recovery meals properly. Okay. The last story, Mrs. Choi told me this one. She said that there was a man who went to a Buddhist temple and he went to fast for one week. He fasted without any problem and he was heading back home. And um, on the way home, there was a very famous, a countrywide, you know, country famous chicken porridge restaurant. And so he said, oh, I'll just get a, you know, um, a, a bowl of porridge and then I'll head home. So he ate, he enjoyed the meal, and he headed home. Well, he must have had, dis, you know, dis digestive disorders to begin with because after that meal, he was not feeling well. 
And in fact, it got so bad that he had to go to the hospital. It escalated and he did not survive. He actually died that night. So this is a very, you know, maybe it's not a typical story. And maybe it's a little extreme and not to everyone has this kind of, you know, problem, but it could happen. So, you know, making sure that we do our recovery meals properly is very, very important. Okay. So controlling the appetite, whew, sometimes you need that external help to be able um, to be able to control, control yourself. All right. So recovery meals. So we're talking about recovery meals now. So now we've been talking about different, um, different fastings, right? So I'm going to be talking about the recovery from water fasting um, to recovery meals first. So after you do recovery meals, you can go straight, I'm sorry, after you do water fasting, you can go straight into recovery meals. So let's say that you do three days of water fasting. Um, so for three days of water fasting, we do one day of recovery per day of fasting, um, up to about three days. Okay, so three days of water fasting, then we start recovery. The very first meal will be one spoon of brown, cooked brown rice. Why is this? Uh, because when you do water fasting and it's like for about three days, then your system, your digestive system thinks, oh, I think there must be a famine in the land. My master is not able to give me food, so I better preserve energy. And so the body starts shutting down or conserving energy and not utilizing the functions that are absolutely um, vital for life. So digestive system slows down. It doesn't produce the stomach acids. It doesn't, you know, get ready to, to do the activity. Okay, and so then if it's not working, if it's not functioning properly like it normally does, and then suddenly you give it a meal, then your digestive system is not ready to take care of that food that goes in. Could you shut the door, please, Andre? Thank you. Um, so then your, your stomach is not ready to accept that food. And so that's why we want to give just that one spoon and not like a scooper full of brown rice, guys. <laughs> like, you know, just a dinner spoon, maybe a heaping dinner spoon full of cooked brown rice. Because as you eat that, you chew and chew and chew and make it t turn into like liquid. That becomes simply a signal to the stomach saying, okay, stomach, from now on, I'm going to start sending you food. So get ready. Start producing the stomach acid and getting ready to di digest food. So that's the first meal, first signal. Then the next meal after that, then you increase a little bit. Either some kind of whole grain, I just use the example of brown rice because it's easy, but you can do other whole grains instead of brown rice. So for the second meal, it might be two spoons of brown rice and a big heaping spoon of some cooked uh, vegetable. Okay, so something that's cooked is easy, easier to digest than raw. So that will be the second meal. And then the next meal, you increase a little bit more, a little bit more, okay? And maybe um, the end of the second day, then you can start adding a little bit of, of something raw and uh, make sure that you chew really well. And then you start increasing until you get to the right portion of food that you should be eating, okay? So this is from water fasting to recovery meals. Fruit fasting is different because fruit fasting, you've been eating all along. Your digestive system hasn't stopped. So you're not going to be eating just one spoonful of rice. You're going to be eating uh, a little more than that. You're going to be eating the same amount of food um, as the, the fruit that you've been eating. But it'll be very simple. It'll be um, brown rice, a cooked vegetable, and another cooked vegetable, pretty much. And you're going to be amazed because your taste buds are going to be reset. And as you taste this food, you're going to say, wow, that's the best brown rice I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> what? Carrots can taste this good? <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's so funny. And we did the brown rice as a first meal. I usually do that. And one, um, one man, you know Taya, the one that introduced it to you, he said, wow, this brown rice is so good. How did you make it? And so I introduced him to my rice cooker. <laughs> it's a Korean brand rice cooker. It's a pressure cooker. And it really does make a difference in the taste. Put a little bit of salt with it and oh, it's really good. Yes. Okay, so now second we're gonna check the transition from water fasting 
to fruit fasting. So if you want to do water for a few days and then transition to fruit, that's fine too. So what would do, like let's say you did three days of water fasting and then you want to trans transition to fruit fasting. Now again, your stomach is not ready to take in and digest food, so we can't give you know, the whole portion of fruit that you guys are eating now. So what we do is we start with maybe, if it's a, a small apple, maybe about a third of that apple and a peel it. This is the only time we peel the apple and don't eat the peel. Only when we're transitioning from water to fruit, okay? Because that outside, that fiber on the outside of the um, apple is harder to digest, okay? Which is good for us normally, but just in this transition, we want to peel it so that digestion doesn't have any problems. So about a, th you know, a, of a small apple, about a third of that, and chew and chew and chew and chew and really well. And, um, and then the next meal, you'll have a different fruit, but increase the quantity. Maybe, um, you know, a mandarin and a, and a half or something like that. And then increase the next meal, maybe a full banana or, you know, and then just increase bit by bit um, until you get to the full amount of the, of the fruit fasting portion. Okay, <clears throat> now there's a transition from our fruit fasting to our recovery meals. Okay, as I just said, the amount of your first meal for recovery from fruit fasting to recovery meals is about the same amount of, of the fruit that you've been eating. So you've been eating about a bowl full, full of fruit, and that usually equates to like two small apples. What You could have two bigger mandarins. If you had the smaller mandarins, you have three of them. Um, two bananas, or you had some giant bananas, so it was like one and a half of the bananas. And uh, the melon, uh, probably, it's probably about oh, a cup and a half or so of, of the cut fruit. So that's the portion. Okay, and that's what we, and then we'll um, start with very easily digestible foods. And then as we continue to recover, we'll start introducing um, a little bit more complicated foods and nuts and beans until we're about uh, two thirds, three fourths finished with the recovery meals. Okay, so yeah, usually, uh, I guess it's almost, the second day, we start adding a little bit of, um, yeah, something a little bit more complicated just to make sure um, that before then, your digestive system can ease into getting the, um, you know, get, uh, ease into digesting uh, whatever foods that we give you properly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So then, if you only do fruit fasting for one day, um, then the recovery time for the next day would not be so strict, right? Mm -hmm. So one day of fruit fasting, then the next day I would just say eat temperately. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't overeat. If you do fruit fasting for two days, okay, when you do your recovery meal, it doesn't have to be so small. It can be a little bit more, um, but just don't overeat. And then just increase in two days. All right. Any questions about recovery meals? If you're doing uh, the fasting for four days, fruit fasting for four days, mm -hmm. how long is recovery? Okay, if you're doing fruit fasting for four days, how long is the recovery? Um, you know, originally when I learned this, I learned one day of fasting equals one day of recovery. And then, um, so I took that very literally, and there were people that were fasting for 10 days, or 20 days or a month, right? And so then I was teaching like, okay, if you're fasting for 30 days, do your recovery in 30 days. Uh, that really didn't make sense. You know, that would be like this amount of food, you know, <laughs> increasing in 30 days. And then Selena, working as a dietitian in the hospitals, she mentioned that when people, you know, are off of, of foods, um, they usually take three days to do the recovery, basically. And so I've been kind of following that. So as, if people do a longer fast, I tell them to just maybe stretch it out a little bit more, increase bit by bit according to how um, their digestion works. But probably three days is a good, good rule. Okay. All right, any other questions? What about pineapple juice? What about pineapple juice? Yeah. Like, um, like drinking pineapple juice, is that a big, is that a no, like, you know, with eating the pineapple? Oh, okay, you mean because of the enzyme, bromelain? Bromel bromel Ooh, that's a qu good question. Selena, do you know if there's a lot of bromelain in pineapple juice? Yeah, but we don't know. 
Yeah, maybe, yeah, with the meal? Mm. So when people are more sensitive, it might really um, have an effect if you're not eating it together with a meal. But typically, um, we don't drink a lot of juices because we want. you're going to learn that we really want to eat the whole foods as much as possible. Mm. But if you do, it's not like I mean, you're never, ever going to drink juice again, but it's not the best. We're going to talk about that in the next few days. But if you do drink um, some, I would drink a little bit, and then I would drink it um, right before your meal, like maybe 15 minutes before your meal and then you'll have the food mm. right there. Or as you have the composition of your meal, like if you have, you know, like, like when we eat granola or cereal, we eat it with some kind of soy milk or plant-based milk, right? If you eat just the granola by itself, you get, your mouth gets really dry, okay? So there's a balance of moisture that's necessary in foods. So if in your meal, you don't have a lot of moisture foods, then I would do a little bit of you know, I don't do it often, but I, I could do a little bit of the juice together with the meal. Mm -hmm. All right. But typically, we don't drink water. We don't drink, you know, liquids with our meals. Yeah. Any other questions about recovery? I just have one more about that man, that Buddha. So he was fasting, was it no food, no water for the one week? Oh, the man that was fasting from the, Bo the Buddhist man who was fasting for one week. Um, I would imagine that it was water, but I'm not sure. He might have gone without water. Did he have a full meal after he ate? So after the fast, he went and had the full meal of the porridge, chicken porridge. But ch chicken and meat is one of the most highly indigestible, undigestible, undigestible foods. So it's so hard to digest. And that's the problem. Yeah. On water once, and I was nauseating. And my first meal was a bit of fruit, but the second one wasn't. You know, and um, and I suffered. Yeah, you know, my, my yeah. stomach really suffered. Yep, having yes, yeah, suffering because you you don't do the recovery meals properly is uh, definitely something that can that can happen. Oh. So just got to be very careful about that. Mm. Okay. Okay, so if you are juicing pineapple with other vegetables, is it equivalent to a meal or to water? So anytime that you're eating foods, um, it's, it, it's uh, something that, will, um, that needs to be digested by your stomach. So it's much less, it, there's much less work to be done, right? Because the juicer has gotten rid of the fiber. And um, so it's not exactly water, but it's not exactly food. It's in the middle but it still needs to be di digested, huh? Yes, it's good for its absorption, but there's... Uh, that's a good question. Selena, do you know? Does, is it, does juice just bypass all the rest of it and just go to the colon and absorb the nutrients there, or is there a process... Yeah, so there's still activity. Because of what? Sorry? Yeah, so similar to water. So through the stomach, so it, there might be some function um, because there's, some, there's something in there, right? Even though there's not fiber. But yeah, the absorption mostly takes place in the intestines, right? So, but then I wouldn't consider it fully water. Uh, because it does have the nutrients in there. And it's got the sugar. Yeah. yeah. Is that? Um, and for me, just, one, just one grain. Okay. Okay. Just one grain, that's all. All right. What were you saying? Uh, yeah, well, the, the digestion is going to be much quicker, but also depends on how much fiber is actually in the juice, because a lot of juices do still have, a, you know, like if you strain it through a fine tube, you're going to see... Still see some fiber. fiber sure, sure. Yeah, most of it will go through if it's, if it's been sieved, it'll get absorbed. Yep, so most, uh, yeah, most of the fiber will be gone, but if you don't finally um, strain it, then you may still have a bit of fiber left. Yeah. Depending on the juicer. Depending on the juicer. Yeah, yeah, the quality of the juicer and your foods.
Okay, so we said that fasting comparatively to, reco uh, to recovery meals is easy. And then recovery meals is more difficult. But what's more difficult than that? That's right, eating healthy for the rest of your life. That's the greatest challenge, right? And so this is what we want. We want to change our lifestyles so that we can be healthy for the rest of our lives. And so that means that what you're learning here is not something just for these 10 days. These are principles to carry on back when you get home. Especially with the water drinking, I hope that this becomes a habit that you take on for the rest of your life because it's necessary. Most diseases begin because of dehydration and people don't even know it. So that this drinking water, the schedule is, is very, very important. Okay, so continue e eating healthy for the rest of your life is our goal. And yet it may be a challenge. Okay, the second one here says, how often should one fast? A fast that's three days or longer, we consider a major fast whether it's water or fruit fasting, three days or longer, because it takes a toll. And so uh, for a major fast, we say, try not to do it more than once a year for most people, okay? Especially if it takes a toll on you. But if you are overweight or uh, obese, you very may well be able to do it again or longer. You might learn how to do it properly here with the right way to do the recovery meals, and then go home and then do it properly, maybe even for a longer time. All right, so um, that is okay, but you have to check your own you know, situation. If it takes a toll on you, it drains you of your vitality and energy, you don't wanna do it too often, right? Try not to do it more than once a year in that case. But Ellen White tells us that it's very beneficial to do fasting one day a week. So you can do water fasting or fruit fasting one day a week and that's really good for you. The only thing is, remember to do recovery properly the next day. So that means just eat temperately, don't overeat. All right, so some pastors are really interesting. They say, oh yeah, I fast on Sabbath. I don't eat breakfast, I don't eat lunch, but when the sun comes down and I, goes down and I go home, then I eat whatever I want. Is that a benefit? Yeah, uh, yeah because number one, they're probably going to gorge themselves. <laughs> number two, when are they eating? At night. Big meal at night when they don't need the energy when they're going to be going to sleep. So um, if we want to fast, it's better to fast the evening meal. And for those of you who want to continue to lose weight, don't eat the evening meal. Even when you go home, just eat breakfast and lunch or just eat two meals a day. Eat what, 9, 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. and good to go or 8, 8 a.m., 2 p.m., what, whatever suits your schedule for your work or whatever you do, okay? And then don't eat the evening meal. You'll continue to lose weight. Those of you who are underweight, you might need to eat a little something for the evening meal, but just make sure that it's digested uh, before you go to sleep. So this is the principle. It's not always just eat fruit for dinner. The principle is make sure that your food is completely digested when your body goes to sleep, goes to rest. Does that make sense? Yeah. Have you ever felt that? Yeah. Going to bed on a, he on a full stomach? Yeah. Do you have weird, weird dreams? <laughs> and you don't have good sleep, right? All right. I was just going to say it's important to have water meals. You know, that's why we're drinking so much here is, is, is we need to, you know, because you, your normal, your food contains a lot of water, which you need. So, like, if, we, if we're going to have less meals, like cut out our dinner, you know, we need to be sure, like, have, like, a water drinking time. You know, like, mm. that's, my, that's my meal. We don't mm. need to, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you are going to eat, if you're not going to eat the evening meal, you can drink water at that time instead because we do need fluids. Okay. All right. Next question. Um, actually, I don't have this question in here, but I want to, um, I want to address it because I remembered who is eligible to fast and who is not eligible to fast. So typically children, we do not have them fast. 
Okay, they're growing, they need their nutrition. But in some cases, I've come across children that are obese and they've had a lot of trauma because of the obesity, even mental, emotional damage. Um, and in cases like that, I just take it one day at a time. And I, and I tell them what we do. We do fruit fasting, only eat the small amount of fruit in, in each meal. Do you want to try it for a day? And then they say, yes, I do. And then they try it for the day. And then I'll ask them the next morning, do you want to do another day or do you want to transition to the regular, you know, you know, to the recovery meals? And some kids, yeah, for some reason they say, I want to keep going and they stick it out, right? Um, but some they're like, no, I want to, I want to eat. And then we just transition them. Because uh, the stress of fasting, if you don't want to do it, can be more detrimental than the benefits of fasting. So only when somebody wants to fast do we have them do the fasting. Okay? Don't force anybody. Elderly people, especially who are weak, we don't tell them to fast. But there are some people who, you know, elder, the term elderly is very relative. <laughs> you know, some people are elderly at age 60, but <laughs> other people I know are age 60 and they're very young and, you know, strong, filled with vitality. So it's kind of relative. Um, some people are 80 and they're still strong, you know, um, number wise, they might be elderly. But typically elderly people we just kind of see their condition. If they've got enough weight and strength and then they want to do it, um, we will allow them to do it. But if they're frail, definitely not. So elderly people, if they lose a lot of weight, many of them have problems regaining weight and strength and energy. So we want to make sure that they have enough strength to be able to continue day by day. Okay, and then I already talked to you about people who are taking chemotherapy treatments. Uh, we usually don't have them do the fasting um, if they've had it in the last year. Also, people who are underweight and very thin, we don't want them to go down and go down too, too low. So if there's somebody who's kind of underweight, uh, according to the BMI chart, then sometimes I say, do you want to do one day of fasting and um, try it out? And I'm monitoring the weight. I'm monitoring weight, haven't lost too much, so I'm saying, okay, um, you know, I think it's okay. But then if they're feeling really, really um, horrible and awful, it's sometimes good to transition um, even earlier. Okay, next, constipation is normal while fasting. You don't have the same amount of food, you don't have, you know, a lot of fiber, and so it's normal. Um, when we went to Korea the first time, uh, one of our, our team members that were there, he said, I haven't gone for one week. And so that is something that does happen during fasting. But if you feel really um, a lot of discomfort, you know, we can give you some chia seeds with water or some flax seeds with water to kind of help you with that process. Once you start eating, or maybe, you know, a couple days after you start eating the recovery, then it should start to come. All right. So let us know if you need some chia or flax and just let the kitchen, kitchen team know that. All right, medications and fasting. So while you're fasting, you're not only um, fasting, eating small amounts of food, you're also drinking plenty of water, you're walking, you're exercising, you're getting sunshine, you're sleeping. And so a lot of that takes, uh, does the same work does a similar work as your medications like um, diabetes medication or hypertensive medication, okay? So it's clearing out the blood, et cetera, right? And so because of that, we can see that when people fast and they're still taking their medication, that their numbers might drop too low and become problematic. So it's very important that people who are taking me uh, medication uh, monitor themselves um, and we're not health professionals, so we can't really, you know, advise you medically, but I can tell you from experience what's con what can be really harmful to you. So if somebody is diabetic and they're taking the medication um, and then they're doing all this fasting, then their blood sugars drop. And if it drops too low, they become hypoglycemic and that could kill somebody because we need glucose in all parts of the body, including our brain. And if our glucose, and if our brain is um, deficient of glucose, then it could stop the functions of your entire body. 
So it's very, 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 very important that uh, we monitor, monitor uh, diabetics. And then they have to reduce their medication, reduce their insulin intake, and they can manage it according to how, how they're going. Um, so even things like um, uh, some people take aspirin um, or blood thinners or different things for the heart. So these kinds of medications, they are something that they can be um, adjusted. Now, I, I tell people, you know, check with your doctors. Tell them what kind of program that you're going to, and then you can monitor it with their help if you need their help, okay? Um, so, yeah, just be very careful. You know, people are so different. Um, some people have extremely high blood pressure, and they don't take medication. Uh, some people have high sugars, and they don't take medication. Um, and then it just kind of fluctuates, and then you can see the changes that happen during the fasting. Um, we ask those different questions on the application so that we know what to, you know, um, what the situation is. Like, let's say that you're, um, you're, you have hypertension. And then I say, well, what's your blood pressure when you take medication? And let's say it's normal or it's uh, like 130 over 90. I said, okay, so what's your blood pressure when um, you're not taking medication? And it says 145 over 90. Okay, well, that's not a huge difference. And so when you change your lifestyle, especially going through the fasting and then changing all that you have learned here, um, you're going to notice that you can be able to control that blood pressure very easily just through lifestyle. All right? So for those of you who have various conditions, just keep monitoring and making those adjustments as necessary. Now, people who are taking medications for certain diseases like gout, um, or um, mental illness, or seizures, or you know other things, other conditions. It's very important not to take off the med you know stop the medication straight away because you're going to have some very strong side effects, some some repercussions. And so for those kinds of things, I think you've got to wait until you um, start improving, and then with your doctor's help, you can make the adjustments to your medications. So um, there's some people that have, um, what is it, hypothyroidism, and they, um, yeah, we, we tell them not to take off their medication straight away, but as they start improving, you know, with their doctor's help, just reduce that. Okay, now this is uh, something that I've been talking to you about, the recuperative response, that as you're going through the fasting, uh, things are cleansing, they're, all the bad stuff is going out, and so before things get better, they get worse. So if you've had migraines in the past, then probably during the fasting, you'll probably get a migraine pretty, pretty bad. Okay. But then eventually as you start your recovery meals, it will start to, to, um, reside. There was a young man and he, he was very young, but he said he had a problem with migraines for many, many years and he couldn't get over the migraine headache without medication. But he came to our program and he started fasting, uh, but he also got sick. He got a severe cold. And so he had fever. He was, you know, headachy and, and um, you know, miserable. And um, so then as he was going through the fasting, he was getting that detox, but accentuated uh, detox symptoms, the, rec the re recuperative response. But, you know, as soon as he started the recovery meals, whew, the migraine went away. <laughs> it got better. And um, he said, this is amazing. This is the first time I've ever recovered from a migraine without medication. And the pain was so much shortened. It, the length of um, the time of the pain was so much shortened. So even if some, um, you know, this fasting doesn't get rid of your issue, your problem straight away, if you continue on following what you learn, it can help you and possibly reduce greatly or even take away your diseases completely. All right, so things get better, worse before they get better. If you've had a car accident or um, you hurt your knee, hurt your shoulder, had stomach problems, these things might, uh, these pains might become worse before they get better. 
So sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, oh, you know, this one's hurting so bad. You know, is there anything we can do? So we talk about it, see if there's anything that we can do very simply at that time. And um, uh, when they talk about the pains, uh, many times I'll say, this is a good sign. It's a good sign. It's a recuperative response. That means healing is taking place. And um, hang in there. Now, we have to use common sense, my friends, right? Common sense is some sense that's really lacking in this world today. So you have to know yourself. If you are, you, you know your body. If you know that something is wrong, like really wrong, then you have to go to the doctor or hospital or E, we call it ER in America, you guys call it ED here. Go to the emergency room and, um, you know, get the help that you need. So please use common sense. And you don't have to say, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, if you really truly do need some help. All right? So know yourself. Get the help that you need. All right, next thing that we need to remember is to choose slowly. But actually, that's not accurate. I want to say chew thoroughly. Chew thoroughly. Just because you chew slowly doesn't mean that it's thorough. All right? So we want to remember our reason for fasting as we are doing the, both the fasting and the recovery meals. All right, so there was a lady. Her name was Arlen. She's the lady in the middle. She had had a massive stroke that le left her paralyzed. She couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. She couldn't even get up to eat food. That's how bad it was. Amazingly, it was just, uh, I think, a week or so before we had our very first program in Thailand. And so her friends, her colleagues, they learned about the Maker Heels and what to do. And they told her, um, they consulted with Mrs. Choi and said, oh, what should we tell her to do? It's like, oh, she had a very severe stroke, but it's very close to the time that she had it, right? It was only a couple of weeks probably since she had the stroke. And so that's a good sign. The quicker you can implement this, when somebody has an incident, the more likely it is that they can recover or have a greater amount of recovery. But if it's a stroke that's happened like 10 years ago, I'm not sure how much they could recover. I mean, it's, it's possible. I have another story I'll tell you about that one. But Arlen, she was bigger at that time. And, um, and so because she had enough weight and because of the severity of her situation, um, she was recommended to do 15 days of water fasting and 15 days of fruit fasting. That's a long time, right? Okay. But it's because she had the excess weight to lose. So you would never have somebody do um, a longer fast if they didn't have that excess weight to lose. Okay. All right. So she was determined to get well and she had the support of her family. So she did it. Started drinking water, just water, 15 days. And after a few days, she was able to sit up. She was able to start eating. A few days after that, she was able to start walking. And a week, week after that, she's able to go upstairs. They sent me a video about three, four weeks after um, she started the fasting. And it was a video of her and her family and friends out at the beach. She's standing, singing, laughing. And she, through this process, regained the usage of most of her, her limbs of her body. She came about four months after that time, and she was sharing her testimony. And her speech was slurred. It was impacted by the stroke. And so she, she went and um, she said, she was still talking, and she said, I'm still determined to follow the way that God has, has instructed to us, and I want my speech to improve. And I know that God is my healer. It's pretty amazing. I mean, you don't know how many people that I've met who have, who have become paralyzed because of strokes. I remember in India visiting at least two pastors who had gotten strokes and they cannot do anything. They're bedridden. And their wives are struggling to take care of them and to take care of their family, to make a living. And I'm thinking, wow, it's so simple. It's so simple, right? Like they didn't have to have the rest of their lives stuck in a bed. We know some very simple things to do, don't we? 
just by abstaining from food, <laughs> drinking the water, getting the sunshine, sleeping early. It can change someone's life. It can change a family's life. There was another pastor who came to um, this program and um, he had paralysis on one side and so he was limping and he didn't have proper usage of his hands and um, um, you know he had tried everything he had gone to different health retreats he had done all kinds of different treatments possible but he still hadn't gotten better but about midway through our program he comes to Mrs. Choi during the walk after one of the meals and he says to her look well, she can't see because she's blind, but um, to the others, like, look, I can run. My legs are working. Look, my hands are working. God had given him freedom from the paralysis. It's possible. And his um, stroke had or probably happened a few years prior. So it is possible. Funny story about him is that in his village where he was pastoring in his church, they like to celebrate by getting a big cow, slaughtering it, and sharing the meat amongst all the church members. <laughs> and then in the middle of the program, he gets a phone call, Pastor, we got a cow. When you come back, we're going to have a big feast. And he's like, um, when, I got, when I get back, let me tell you what I've learned. <laughs> and he was, he was very... Um, adamant that he was going to be sharing with his church members the truth of the health message, especially through his personal testimony of how he had gotten well. How, how long did he do water fast? He? Oh, he probably just did fruit fasting. Is he a large man or what's his situation? No, he's probably a um, um, mid-average size man, and he just did probably fruit fasting just for three days. Yeah, that's right. So it depends. Every person is different. So um, you, you do what you know, and uh, you make adjustments along the way and see how things go, and especially pointing people to Jesus as the healer. That's it. Okay, you guys look pretty tired. Any, any questions? No questions. Okay. No worries. I went through it thoroughly. Or are you overwhelmed with information? Was it a lot? A lot of information? <laughs> yes. I, I do see a lot, of, uh, a lot of sleepiness this morning, but that's okay. Hopefully you get enough that you can um, apply it to your life. All right. So as I talk to you about um, spiritual fasting, Going along with the physical fasting, we have about um, almost nearly 40 minutes before lunchtime. So I'm going to ask that you spend this time by yourself in nature or in your room. And it's a time to spend with God. Amen. Seek Him with all of your heart. All right? Consider all these things that I've, I've shared with you this morning, especially about forgiveness for yourself. Forgiving yourself, forgiving God, forgiving other people, asking for forgiveness. So really think about these things um, in the next 37 minutes. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for you are the God that is all-knowing and all-caring and all-powerful. Lord, um, thank you for the wonderful, miraculous things that you can do to transform a life, to heal somebody who has no hope. Lord, um, we want to take this information and help people. And I pray that you'll help each one of us, not only to apply it to our own lives, uh, but to be your medical missionaries, your witnesses, to help others to know you and the way to restoration. Thank you so much. We love you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.